Oh yeah, look the whole thing droop. Ah, look at that. What's up guys, today we're talking about Carbon-X polypropylene with carbon fiber from 3DX Tech. Now this specific formula is a special polypropylene copolymer reinforced with a premium high modulus carbon fiber. This combination offers much easier printing than regular polypropylene with a bit more strength and stiffness, excellent dimensional stability, and a really nice surface finish. So here's the box and the spool when you order it on our store. Comes in this nice vacuum packed sealed bag. Now the cool thing about this is you never need to dry it. So if it's sealed or unsealed, it's good to go right out of the box for whatever printer you're using. And remember, we've got a rewards program, so everything you buy in our store, you get points back, and that can go towards nozzles, machines, filaments, whatever you want. So definitely go to visionminer.com slash materials and check it out. So let's get into it. Polypropylene, much like PET, is found almost everywhere, especially in the food industry. We've got bottles and bottle caps mostly, pallets, crates, storage containers, household products, uh, battery cases, medical devices, even yogurt cups. Uh, it's basically that plastic that won't break, it won't shatter, and it just bends over and over and over and stretches a little bit. Uh, this particular filament is based on a patent-pending polypropylene formula that has improved thermal properties as well as low shrinkage and warp compared to the competitive filaments. Now, something interesting to note as well is that due to the low density of the material, this 750 gram reel has the same volume, the same amount of filament as a one kilogram reel of ABS or ASA. Now, let's talk a little bit about where you're going to see this actually used in industries. One of the best applications for polypropylene is living hinges. This is hinges that can be used thousands of times without any wear and there's no moving parts. So think about the cap on your hand sanitizer or your shampoo bottle. That's a living hinge. Now this carbon fiber polypropylene is a bit more rigid, so you probably won't use it for that, but very cool application. It tells you a little bit about the material. Now, according to some reports, the current global demand for polypropylene is around 62 million tons per year. This stuff is literally everywhere. In industry, it's often used in automotive when chemical and thermal resistance are needed. Uh, and with a carbon fiber, it can be used for structural parts or things like intake manifolds. Now, I probably wouldn't bolt it straight to the engine block, but this could be definitely be used for intake arms and ducting and things of that nature. What kind of machine do you need to print polypropylene? Uh, first of all, your nozzle is going to have to go anywhere from 220 to 250 Celsius. Uh, all the way up to 270 on some printers, so most printers in the market can handle it. Uh, bed temperature goes from room temperature up to 60 Celsius, and for adhesives, there's a few solutions out there, but generally packing tape works great. You can also get polypropylene sheets, and I've heard some reports about it working on polycarbonate. Now, for supports, you can use Aquatec X1 universal support material, uh, and also Aquasys 120, and both of those we've got on our website, available for sale right now. As far as drying goes, you never have to dry this filament, which is fantastic. With most thermoplastics, you got to dry them before you use them, but this actually doesn't uptake enough moisture to make any difference, if any at all. By the way, if you're enjoying these videos, please hit that like and subscribe, and let us know in the comments below what you want to see next or what test you think would give you a valuable uh, perspective and something you haven't seen anywhere else. We're happy to take those comments and use them, so definitely leave something down below. So let's talk about some basic material specifications. Uh, it doesn't absorb moisture, so you don't have to worry about drying it, and you can use it underwater or in moist environments. It's got really, really, really good chemical resistance, some of the best in the business. It's very low density and lightweight while still having high strength and stiffness. And it's relatively easy to print on just about any 3D printer, even the open air ones. Now, with all carbon fiber filaments, you're definitely going to want to have a hard steel nozzle. Brass nozzles will go out like really, really fast. We definitely recommend one of those. We have them on our site for E3D V6, M6 by one threads. Check out visionminer.com slash nozzles for those. And let's get right into the chemical resistance. For acids, you've got acetic acid, boric acid, hydrochloric acid, phosphoric acid, stearic acid, sulfuric acid, and uric acid. It's good on all of those. For bases, uh, hydroxides of ammonium, barium, calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium. For solvents, we're looking at acetone, ethanol, MEK, phenol, uh, and, and water. They're, it's very, very chemically resistant. 
Uh, and maybe we didn't list some of them there, but you can find all the information in the data sheets at visionminer.com slash data on our website. So go there, check it out, and then you can really look around and find a lot more about polypropylene, chemical resistance, thermal stuff, whatever you need. Okay, so now let's check out some example parts. Uh, I'll start off with these sample bars. We've got these sample bars here. We'll actually send you one of these if you've got an interesting application, you want to test it out, see if it'll melt in your solvent or whatever. Uh, but we've got these available on the website. And as you can see, you get pretty good finish. It looks really nice. It's sort of a matte carbon fiber finish. Now, one thing you'll notice is that it is warpy. This is about probably four millimeters thick and it loves to warp. It is not the easiest material to print. Carbon fiber makes it a lot easier, but you can still get some really beautiful parts out of it. This is a little example jig type fixture for manufacturing and it is definitely well used that, especially because of the solvent resistance and it's generally stiff enough and strong enough to be you know, the, the impact strength is good, so you can whack it around. It's not going to break. They should last a long time. Sometimes people even use these for uh, not injection molds, but vacuum molds. Uh, here we've got an electronics enclosure that we've printed in every single material. And we're going to do a full review video on all of those to show the differences between all the materials. Definitely hit subscribe so you don't miss that one. Uh, but as you can see, it gets details very, very well. Once again, though, Using packing tape on the bottom, you do get some warping. So there's little things you can do to keep it down to the bed a little bit better by adding some geometry to the bottom of the part. But for example's sake right now, we just want to show you sort of what you're going to be dealing with in general. Now, moving right along, we've got the vases, the vases. Very, very nice surface finish. It's smooth, it's matte, it looks clean. You do see a little bit of discoloration in rings throughout the part. Very, very interesting. And here you'll see if you print too hot, then you get a, a lot of drooping. As you can see there, it, it was getting very melty up near the top. So definitely make sure to dial in your settings. All right, so that brings me to the breaking and burning portion of the video, what you're all here to see. And uh, we're going to take these vases and I'm going to smash my fingers through them. We're going to break these little things and then we're going to light some stuff on fire. So let me get the handy dandy Babco vase and of course, safety first over here. Get something on just in case it explodes, even though it won't because it's polypropylene. So I'm going to go ahead and just put this puppy right in this vise just down to the logo there. And we're just gonna bend it all the way through to see how it reacts with the carbon fiber in there. Now, normal polypropylene pretty much would not break. It'll just bend a million times. Let's see what happens with the carbon fiber. Ah, okay, broke pretty quickly. Let's do a second test just to make sure that wasn't a fluke. I'm gonna break another one here real quick. As you can see, it's got a good amount of give. I'm just gonna put that right in there. Boom, thumbs over. Yeah, and we get a clean break. The sticker held this one together. No, that's the packing tape that was left over on the bottom. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so it was, it, was, it was kind of a thud break. It wasn't explosive. It wasn't a huge impactful break, but it did break and we got very good layer adhesion in there, as you can see. And as you can see here, the white, the white color, that's from the stretching of the material before it breaks. You, you ever bend a zip tie and you notice it changes color around the edges? Sort of the same thing happening here. The polymer itself is exposing itself from the carbon fiber. All right, all right. So nothing crazy for the breaking. Uh, now I'm gonna do it to the beautiful vase. I'm just gonna take my thumbs and smash them right in. We're gonna see if it breaks along the layers, if it crushes, if it bends, if it folds, how it breaks, and let's just get right into it. Here we go. All right, so it's got a little bit of give. Yep. It's not breaking right off the bat, and then boom. Okay, so we broke across the layers across here, it really goes up and down across three or four layers, and then straight down in this jagged pattern right here. Interesting. All right. I'm just going to do the full crush. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that carbon fiber definitely makes it a lot more brittle. Normal polypropylene would not break like this. So you sort of, you're giving up a little bit of the ductility for a little more rigidity. Nice. Yeah, if this was like a plastic water bottle, you know, you just crush it and nothing would happen. Very cool. All right. 
And uh, since this one's already broken, we might as well do a little more breaking for you. Just sort of, okay, tears apart. Oh, now that it did not really tear across the layers. I don't know if you can see that, but it really went diagonally. So really good layer fusion going on. Um, and it just tore through the part. Interesting. All right. Uh, so now let's light some stuff on fire. Uh, before I do, I'm going to pull over the Bofa Print Pro 2 here, which is a fume extractor for the shop. We've got the 3 and 4 as well, but this one's nice because it's, it's relatively inexpensive and it can be used for anything from soldering to you know, grinding or wood burning or anything like that where you just have a little bit of fumes going around and you don't want to stink up the shop. I love using this thing. All right, so let's take this. I'm going to start with some thin pieces from the vase that we just broke. I'm just going to hold the flame up to it for about 10 seconds, see how it ignites, if it starts dripping, if it you know, just lights on fire like crazy, or what exactly happens. And then we're going to light the fire on the thicker part. So let's turn on the fume extractor. And here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it's on fire. We have complete ignition here. Oh, God. This is dangerous. Dripping. Definitely not self-extinguishing like a lot of our other materials. It could be considered, oh, it's still burning in there. Still burning. It hit the ground and it's still burning. I don't know if you can see that. This would definitely, <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, I used to light those little, uh, those little army men on fire and it, they would drip like this and I accidentally lit my neighbor's lawn on fire one time doing that. Anyway, all right, now it's out. Interesting, it started to melt through the bottom there too. Yep, nice and soft. All right. Yeah, so <laughs> not that resistant to direct flame. No uh, UL94 V0 FST rating, definitely not. Uh, let's do another little section before we move on to the thick part. Do it right there. Oh man, instantly, lights on fire. Super thin piece. Keep in mind, this is not thick. It's not just going to light on fire, but when you've that much flame on that little material, definitely whew, goes up in smoke real quick. All right, let's move right along here. I'm going to burn this sample bar now. So I'm gonna start on the lettering so you can see what happens to the letters as we burn it and just see if it, how it melts and, and what goes on. Let's check it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm watching it boil, and now it's on fire. So the whole thing caught on fire. That's not going out. I'm going to put it out. And, uh, yeah, not the most flame resistant. Definitely not. It expanded a significant amount. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. That's different. All right, let's just light the whole thing on fire. See what happens. Here we go. It's just going to go like, like crazy. Oh, geez. All right, it's going to start dripping. Let's go. Three, two, one. Woo! Oh, yeah, look, the whole thing droop. Ah, look at that. Gee whiz. Okay, so it's, uh, it seems like the heat was going through the whole part because the entire part just started drooping. This hasn't really happened with most of the other materials. Usually it's just the outer surface or outer layers that do this. But I would imagine that the polypropylene itself being low density plus the carbon fiber, which lo loves to transmit heat, um, probably does not help this in direct flame. <laughs> wow. All right, still really soft. I mean, this is, this is still floppy. Let's see how long it takes to harden. I'm just gonna go back and forth here. Blow on it a little bit. Wow, that's hold, it's holding a lot of the heat, for sure. I mean, it's still completely floppy. I can still stretch it apart. Wow. Wow, look at that. And you're starting to get the discoloration where the carbon is gone. And there you have it. You can get this sample bar for an extra fee on our website. <laughs> 
would you guys buy this if we sold these on eBay? Leave it in the comments below. Uh, anyway, cool. All right, we'll turn off the Bofa here real quick. And that is Carbon X CF polypropylene. Very cool material. Very, very good. I would recommend this for anyone who needs high chemical resistance and a good impact strength. Really, if you're gonna call us up and say, what should I use that stuff for? That's what I'm gonna recommend, along with PVDF and some other ones. Anyway, check out all our other videos and you'll be able to see all these tests on the variety of materials we offer at visionminer.com slash materials. As always, thanks for watching. Have a positive rest of your day and we'll see you on the next video.